Hello everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer.com, we install, test, and review tons of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before your purchase. Today we're going to be working on a 2017 Chevy Colorado, and we're going to be taking a look at, and I'll show you how to install, the eTrailer Direct Connect Base Plate Kit. Our base plate is going to be one of the key components in our flat towing setup. We're going to have our base plate, of course, our tow bar, our supplemental braking system, our diode wiring, our safety cables, our stoplight switch, and our battery disconnect. And in our case, we do have a four inch high low adapter and some safety cable extensions. Now this will vary depending on your RV. You just wanna measure the height on your base plate and the height on your hitch for your RV. You just wanna make sure that those numbers are within three inches. And if it's not, you can buy the according high low adapter here at eTrailer.com. The only thing you're going to see is right down here where the tow bar connects. And then to disconnect it, we will unhook our supplemental braking system, our diode wiring, and then we'll unclip our safety cables. And to actually get the arms of our tow bar out of the base plate, we're going to need to remove the safety pin, then we'll twist it 90 degrees, and then pull straight out. This is what it's going to look like every day when we're not flat towing. It's just going to replace our tow hooks. It really doesn't stick out of the fascia too much. There's minor trimming, and it's really not that bad to get installed. Now, one really nice thing is it comes with a little cap to protect the front here so we don't get any dirt or debris into our base plate. Our base plate is going to be a steel construction, so it's going to be really strong for a long time. It's also going to have a nice black powder coat finish to help resist rust and corrosion as well. The tabs for our safety chains are built right into our base plate, so you don't have to worry about getting that installed like some other base plates on the market. It really looks nice on the front of our truck and it doesn't stick out like a lot of the other base plates do. Hooking up is gonna be super simple with our kit as well. Whenever you're ready to hook back up to your truck before your trip, all you're gonna do is take your tow bar, kinda of get it in position, and then we'll slide our arm into place. You do wanna make sure that the hole on the arm is facing straight up, so push that into our base plate, and then turn it 90 degrees just like so. Then we can grab our safety pin and slide that through the hole. You might have to kind of turn it a little bit to get it to line up. Then to hook up our safety chains, we just push that right over our tab, make sure it's in place, and we'll repeat that same process on the other side. We're now ready to plug in our diode wiring. Just lift up on our lid, and then push our wiring into place. Then we can grab our safety chain for our breakaway switch and we'll just clip that on right there now we're ready to hit the road and in terms of installation getting the base plate installed on our colorado really isn't bad at all we didn't have to do any drilling the hardest part was just taking the fascia off so we've talked about the features touched on installation a little bit i'll go ahead and show you how to get it installed to start our installation we're going to want to pop our hood now some models are going to have a plastic threshold right here Ours does not, but if yours does, there's going to be nine plastic push pin fasteners. You're going to want to remove those with a small flathead screwdriver and a trim panel tool. Since ours doesn't have one, we'll just be taking off this top cover. We're going to have six of those T15 bolts. We'll go ahead and get those taken out. We now want to move to our wheel wells. We're going to have six T15 screws that we need to remove. There's going to be three on the bottom and three up this side. We're gonna make sure to do this on both sides. It is kind of tight with our wheel in here, so if you're doing it at home, it might be easier to take your wheel off or get a low clearance ratcheting screwdriver like we have here. Now I just wanna pull out our fender liner, just like so. Then what I like to do is kind of tuck it behind our tire. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's gonna give us a little bit more room to work. You know, just kind of fold this out of the way as much as you can. We're going to have three seven millimeter bolts located right up this body line inside of our fender. It's going to be really hard to see me work, but you can definitely feel and you'll see the first one right here. These aren't going to be super tight, so as soon as you get them kind of broken loose, you can actually take your socket off of your ratchet and then just turn it by hand. It's going to be a little bit easier to do then try to turn that little ratchet in this very tight space. Just like that, there's gonna be two more located on that body line. With our last screw removed, 
We're going to repeat that same process on the driver's side. We now want to move over to our driver's side. We're going to remove a 10 millimeter bolt right here. And on that same little bracket, we're going to have two T15 bolts that we need to remove. We'll repeat that same process on the other side. We have one more seven millimeter bolt to remove right here. You follow this little corner piece off of our fascia. It'll be on a metal bracket. We're going to repeat that same process on our other side. Now I want to unplug our fog light. If you just reach in your wheel well, you'll feel the wiring harness. And you just want to push down on the tab and pull out. Repeat that process on the other side. With all of our hardware removed around it, we are now ready to remove our fascia. But before we do so, we're just going to throw some blue painter's tape on our body lines and around our headlight just to help protect our paint and our plastic on our headlight. That way when we're taking our fascia off, nothing scratches it if it gets close. Now with an extra set of hands, we're just going to pull out and down on our fascia just like so and then work our way towards the middle. And now set this off to the side. We now just want to pull this cover off of our tow hook on both sides. We're now ready to remove our tow hooks. We're just going to use an 18 millimeter socket and wrench just to get these broken loose. We'll break the back on loose now. We can unthread them by hand. You want to make sure to do this on both sides. We'll set our tow hooks off to the side. They will not be reinstalled. If this piece sticks out of where our tow hooks are mounted, you are going to want to ground it down using an angle grinder. You want to do this on both sides and just get it as flush as possible to this mount. With it ground down, we now want to come back with a file. Just file down all of our rough edges and then we'll spray paint it black to prevent any rust or corrosion. Now we'll repeat the same process on the other side. With our paint dry, we can go ahead and get our base plate mounted. To start, we're going to want to remove our 15 millimeter socket or our 15 millimeter bolt right here with our 15 millimeter socket just to lower down this underbody panel and give us a little bit more room. As you can see, that's going to give us a lot of room to work up inside of our frame rail. Our first step is going to be to add our bushing. We're going to be using this rear hole. We want to add it from the back side, so the inside of our frame rail. This tab is going to be on the inside, and you'll see this part come out on the other side. Just like so. We want to grab our four inch long, half inch bolt. We're going to add blue Loctite. You want to make sure to add blue Loctite to any new hardware that we're adding. So we'll grab our bolt. As you can see, it says passenger and our driver's side says driver's side. So it's going to be super easy to figure out which side goes where. We're simply just going to lift our base plate up into place and try to get that hole in our base plate lined up. And we'll take that four inch bolt and just slide it through our bushing like so and through that hole in our base plate. We now grab our three and a half inch bolt with our blue Loctite. We'll just lift up on our base plate like so and slide this through so it can support itself. We want to grab our split lock washer and our hex nut and add that to the bolt on the top and just run it down a few threads. That way we can still move our base plate around, but it's not going to fall off. We now want to grab a flat washer and a split lock washer. We're just going to slide this over the end of our bolt right here. Just like that. Then we'll add a hex nut. Just like so. We're now going to add another bolt with blue Loctite right here. I'm going to have to knock that through a little bit as there might be some burrs on the inside. Then on the back side, we'll add that same flat washer, split lock washer, and hex nut. Now I'm going to grab our metal spacer. That's going to slide right between our base plate and our cross member here. Then we want to grab our thinner bolt. We're just going to slide that through our base plate and through the hole in that metal beam, just like that. 
we're going to be adding our smaller lock washer and smaller hex nut on the back side. We have all of our hardware loosely installed on the passenger side. We went ahead and did the same thing on the driver's side. Now we can come back and tighten it all down. On the front side of this bolt, we're going to be using a 16 millimeter socket. And on the back side, we're going to use a 17. Now again, it is kind of hard to see what we're doing, but you just want to get that socket on the back side and then tighten it down. We're now ready to tighten down our rearmost bolt. We're going to grab a 19 millimeter socket. Add one on the inside and one on the outside, and then tighten it down. Now we're going to come back and tighten these down. We're also going to be using a 19 millimeter socket. We'll now repeat that same process on the other side. We're now ready to come back and torque down all of our hardware. All of our torque specs are going to be listed in our instructions. Now I'm going to grab our safety cable and one of our quick links. We're just going to take our safety cable, slide it behind this bolt from our base plate. We'll just loop these two together like so. We'll run that down just hand tight for now. Then what we're going to do is actually take the other end of our safety cable and push it through our frame. There's going to be a nice hole right up here in our frame rail. We'll pull that down like so. Then we'll actually drop that back down through the back of our base plate, down like so. We'll come back around front and then add this loop to our quick link. Now they are going to send us four quick links, but if you do it this way, we're only going to need to use two. We can now come back with a 17 millimeter wrench and tighten that down. With that tightened down. What we're going to do is just kind of tuck this back behind our base plate, like so. We'll repeat that same process on the other side. We're now ready to reinstall the bolts for our lower air dam. We're just going to push that up as far as possible and then reinstall that bolt. Just like so. Our safety cable might be pinched a little bit in there, but that's perfectly fine. As far as the installation of our base plate is concerned, we're just about done. All we have to do is reinstall our fascia. However, if you are installing any other flat towing components, now would be the time to do that with our fascia off. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll reinstall our fascia in the reverse order that we took it apart with some minor trimming. We'll go ahead and mark where we're going to need to cut out for our base plate. We're just going to come down a little bit and leave a little lip similar to what we have on the top here on the bottom where our tow hooks were. If your vehicle didn't have a tow hook, you're going to cut it out in this similar format, and those dimensions will be listed in our instructions. You can use a utility knife or 10 snips or scissors, just kind of whatever you have available. This plastic really isn't that thick. The next to the hands, we can reinstall our fascia. We're sliding our fascia back on. Our instructions told us to cut out a little bit less than we actually needed to, so we're just going to pull it off, trim away more on the sides and the top. With our fascia reinstalled and everything connected to our RV, we are now ready to hit the road. That's going to conclude our look at and the installation of the e-trailer Direct Connect Base Plate Kit on our 2017 Chevy Colorado.